Welcome to A Pinch of Basil. I am your wonderful host with the most basil. Listen, Rosemary and Herb's son, they couldn't do any better. For my Greek fans that are out there, let me tell you something. we got a special guest. But before we go to her, I'm here with my wonderful co-host, Janice Hermson. And how could we do this without our tremendous, wonderful engineer, Christian Meyer. Christian, I love you, my brother. Thanks for putting this all thing together. Don't forget, we stream live on Facebook, and you can listen on TuneIn app or on any phone device. That's right. You're God, your tablet, your phone, like you can do anything for God's sakes. Once you have the app, just search America Matters. If you're on the computer, just go to americamatters.us and we want to hear your comments. Go to my Basil Fans page. That's B A S I L E F A N S. Like me, watch me. You're going to love this show because I'll tell you, we're excited. Uh, comments, go to my Basil Fans page. Like I said, if you have any questions, and I'm sure some of you will. This is one of the most elite <laughs> athletes that we have. You're going to call on a call us 844-790-8255. You can call in. We are being heard all around the world in Australia, all the way through South Africa, throughout Europe. Yes, in Greece. We're all over the place, and we couldn't do it without our wonderful friends with Greek Beat Radio. Greek Beat Radio. 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 But I was us. That's right. It's Greek Beat Radio. And I got to tell you, folks, I'm going to get right to our guest. It's late in Greece. It's one o'clock. It's not really late in Greece. Let's be honest. I it's mean, early. It's really it's, early. It's, <laughs> it's, not, it's, 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 it's It's my God. I mean, you're you're partying. I'm surprised you got away. Where, where did you go drinking and partying now that you're not really getting ready in shape before we break? Don't answer, folks. <laughs> I got to tell you about our guest because I'm excited. Katarina Stefanidi is a wonderful Olympian champion. Why she agreed to do this show, we don't have any idea. <laughs> but she came on. I, I, I want her on for so long, and we, we connected about a year ago, and she's been in training. But let me tell you a little something about Katarina Stefanidi. Um, Katarina was born in Athens, Greece, to Greek parents, of course. And she grew up, is it, is it Palini? Yeah. Okay, Palini, it's an eastern suburb of Athens. Both of her parents, former track athletes, were they were they outstanding stars like you are? I feel like I have to say yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you, you want to be invited back home. I understand. Uh, in 2000, uh, well, she really started competing at a very young age. In 2000, her first year women's pole vault was included in the Olympics. Katanina started in her pole vaulting career. She broke several uh, age group records and received several medals in youth and junior championships. She has multiple championships and competed. Uh, competed in her first Olympics in London. She graduated from Stanford University in 2003 with a major in human biology and a minor in psychology. While studying for her PhD in Arizona State University, she began her training under the guidance of 2000 Olympic champion Nick Heisung, who won the silver medals in 2014. She won silver medals in 2014 and 2015. At the Dana received her master's in cognitive psychology, which I have a question about that later on, and moved to Cleveland, Ohio, where uh, I lived for a bunch of years. Uh, and she is trained under the guidance of her husband, Mitchell Cryer. Um, 2016, she won a bronze medal in World Indoor Championship and Summer. Um, let me see, indoor championships, and in the summer, she became the European Olympic and Diamond League champion. She didn't stop there. In 2018, she won the bronze in the indoor world championships and became the European Diamond League champion in 2019. The bronze at the world championships became the Diamond League champion. She is currently sponsored by Nike. Is it is it Stoich, is it Stoichman? Stichman, yeah, Stichman. Okay, Stichman. Okay, bravo. Um, Elpi. Is it Elpi or Helpi? Uh, Elpe. It's actually the Greek petroleum company. Ah, bravo. Okay. Toyota and the National Bank of Greece, uh, Elite Strom and Visa and uh, Helen. Is it Helenica? Helenica, yeah. Okay, bravo. I Welcome, Katarina Stefanidi. I, you know what? I, I'm excited that you are part of our show. I've Thanks. been following your career. 
I talked to a lot of track people uh, from college that I knew and a lot of high school coaches that I work with. And I mentioned your name and they're like, oh, my God, really? You're going to have her? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> so you are just so wonderful. Thank you for coming on the show. All Thank right. You for coming. Uh, you, t- tell me, uh, w- uh, what's going on right now? I know that the Olympics is postponed till next year. What's, yeah. you know, I, and it's kind of thrown, I'm sure, because you kind of work up to, to, to the Olympic Games. What are you doing right now? Well, it actually was a bit of a blessing in disguise for us. I had a small injury in January. Uh, I was recovering okay, actually faster than we expected. So I don't think I would have had any issues if the Olympics were this summer. But it's nice to not have to feel rushed, to be ready to defend my title in June. Okay. Uh, so, so that is that. Uh, a lot of competitions are being canceled. Uh, obviously with this whole situation. So it, it is a little bit worrisome with what's going to happen this summer for us. A lot of athletes make their living through competitions. So we're just waiting to see what the World Athletics, uh, which is our governing body, will do in terms of competitions. And we have been trying to stay fit. We, we're actually in Greece. We've been here since the beginning of March. We came for the um, Olympic torch uh, delivery uh, I, I was the last uh, runner running with the torch. Oh, and congratulations. We, we, we kind of got stuck. I don't say we got stuck because it, there were a couple of flights, but we thought it's not a great idea to fly in the middle of a pandemic. So we stayed in Greece and the stadium closed down. So we had to kind of figure out ways to stay fit. So that's kind of where we are, just trying to stay fit. The quarantine is ending next week supposedly here Mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll start to be able to go back into the stadium again well i'll tell you what i i I know you will i'm going to get back but we're going to stick around for the for the next uh break because i have so many more questions folks we're going to take a break and go right to our wonderful sponsors and you are now listening to a pinch of basil with my wonderful guest bethadina stephanie we'll be right back this is America Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ, a Lotus Broadcast Station, the power of radio since 1967. Unable to listen to the whole show? A recording of today's program will be available later today. Visit americamatters.us and click on the podcast link. Now, back to the show. Oh, we are indeed back with my wonderful, talented, beautiful uh, guest, uh, Katerina Stefanidi. And, and, and Katerina, we were talking about your poor husband who's with you in Greece. And here this poor guy is sitting there. And, you know, Mitchell Cryer really doesn't sound like a Greek name to me, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> and you, told me, you said your family is all over. Everyone's speaking in. They can speak English, but they re- just really speak in Greek. And I'm sure he's just having a wonderful time. <laughs> Well, the good the good thing is at least he's forced to learn it, right? You have to see the positives. <laughs> so, and he wants to go to Ikaria, folks. I'm an I'm a proud karioti. I really am. You all see me at the conventions. I do a lot of stuff for the cariotico, for, for the subuyo, whatever they need me to do, I do. But I got to tell you, why the hell do you want to go to Ikaria? Mitchell, dude, you and I are going to have to have a couple of cocktails afterwards to discuss this. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful Nisi. And my, my father one time was telling me, he goes, Dad, tell me about Andros. Ah, Andros, Tioro Nisi. You know, there's lemon trees and there's orange trees and it's very green. It's beautiful. Tell me about Ikaria. Well, if you like sand and rocks, this is the place to go. That's exactly what he told me. Yes, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, um, a couple of more questions. And uh, by the way, Janice, anytime you want to jump in, honey, you, you just go ahead. And oh, do you're so. doing such a great job. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> um, a, a couple of things, you know, how the hell you found time to go ahead and not only get your, your degree, but your Ph.D. Uh, in cognitive psychology. How the heck did you find time to train and actually get your Ph.D.? So, so I got into a PhD program. I actually stopped at the master's level, but I will say that was the hardest part. When I moved from Greece to the U.S. Uh, to California for Stanford, I was very worried because I spoke English, but 
just the English you learn in school and it was very yeah. different moving there and I think for me that was the the hardest part with the move when I went into grad school I th- I had this idea that it would be just as easy as combining undergrad with sports but it was not and I had I mean I remember we would start in the lab or in the class at seven or eight in the morning and I would stay until five or six and then have to drive to where we trained and a lot of times it would be dark and have to train in the dark. So I only really managed to do that for two, two and a half years and that's why the Olympic year I said let's take a year off of school and see what happens and and then unfortunately I never went back to school after that. <laughs> it happens. It yeah. happens. It's okay. I mean um when you know doing that uh, and you're competing at such a high level, I can't really blame you. It's so difficult to do both at one time. Very difficult. Okay. And um, you know, did you when you when in competition, um, is there anything? Uh, well, how do I say this? Things now that you have to deal with in competition, and even back then when you started. What were the most difficult challenges besides the education aspect that you have to face then and today that you have to face as a female athlete or as an athlete across the board? It doesn't matter, male or female. Um, Growing up, I definitely had a lot of weight issues. I think there's no, okay, I shouldn't say no, but I think 90% of female athletes go through something like that. I think some handle it a little better, some handle it a little worse. I think I handled it a little worse. Uh, And and I definitely had uh, quite a few years where I would go up and down 20, 25 pounds. I mean, then I moved there and, you know, in Greece, you don't know what the freshman 15 is, and I learned. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) so I definitely struggle with my weight and I will say even even a lot later even at 23 24 when I started having success even uh as as an elite athlete I still wasn't where I should be I should say Mm -hmm. uh in terms of fitness and I think what helped the most is when my husband and I first started dating and moved in together he really liked cooking and he has studied also related I I mean, exercise science. So it involved mm-hmm. a little bit of, you know, diet in sure. it. And I was never interested in it. So he slowly changed my habits. And I think that's what made the biggest difference in terms of my diet and fixing that issue that I faced since I was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. Now, I would say the hardest part about our job and, and our career is travel. It feels like we live on a plane or an airport <laughs> uh, six months of the year, you know, yeah. people say, oh, do you live in the U.S. or do you live in Greece? And we always <laughs> say, well, we live on the plane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's definitely the hardest part now. But we have developed a lot of friendship with people, you know, other athletes and people that work in these meets. So at least we look forward to seeing a lot of them. Uh, I would say the first few years when we didn't know so many people were the hardest, for sure. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, you know, uh, being married and getting to know one another, too, uh, must have been a, a big curve for you as well. I mean, learning something. And, and what is, if you don't mind me asking, what is what is Mitchell's background? What's his nationality? He's immigrant. He grew up in Colorado, actually. Okay. And we we met in Arizona. He grew up playing a lot of baseball and a lot of his family did construction. So he has this mechanical brain. And I think this is what makes him really good at coaching too. Uh, and, and he also pole vaulted and that's how we met really. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I think definitely, you know, a lot of people always ask, oh, how is it to have your, your husband as a coach? And I think for us, it has been great because I think your husband knows you so much better than a coach knows you. Sure. So, we, we have found a nice balance that doesn't affect us personally, and I think it helps us professionally. So we've, in terms of that, we have no issues. <laughs> well, it's, which is great, trust me. Yeah, listen, my wife and I have issues, but we've been together <laughs> under the same roof for so long right now. I'm dying to go anywhere all right, around the country just to perform kapu somewhere. That's all I want to do. Um, what do you prefer uh, as far as comp- uh, competition? Indoors, outdoors, does it matter to you as a pole bowl? 
Yes, so I, I very much prefer outdoor. Uh, indoor, you always get the same thing, right? There's always the same condition. So I think a lot of athletes actually like that very much because you always know what to expect. Right. I think I'm better at dealing with bad conditions. In fact, in many of the big championships, I always hope that the weather is bad because I know I can deal with it a lot better than other athletes can. Mm -hmm. So I think in, in those situations, I have an advantage. And I think it also puts... You know, it's not just about who is the better athlete. It's about who can perform best that day. And I think that doesn't mean who can just perform, you know, jump the highest, but who can beat the conditions and who can not be bothered by this or that. So for, for me, outdoor, outdoor is definitely um, my favorite. And, I mean, the Olympics take place outdoor, so I think it would be hard to say indoor. <laughs> sure. No, I, I agree. And, and, you know, I, was, I, I had a feeling you'd say outdoors, but that's me because I, I always – listen, I played ball in the outdoors. So, you know, I never really played in a dome, and I always thought that the dome was cheating. Because it was perfect, and you got to deal <laughs> yeah. with the elements. So I, I understand completely. With all the competition that you've been through, with all the people that you pole vaulted against in all the different countries, any, um, I guess, uh, any conflicts with other athletes that you may have a grudge upon? Uh, <laughs> anything like that? I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say so. There is something special about pole vaulters. I think we struggle so much because we have to travel with poles, and airlines give us such a hard time traveling with poles. <laughs> I can imagine. But we all feel so bad for each other, and we all spend so much. You know, we're not like a 100-meter runner who gets out there, runs at the 11-second race, and goes back away. We we stay on the field for four or five hours sometimes, so we, so we interact a lot more. We get to know each other a lot more, and there's actually a lot of respect uh, uh, among the athletes right now. I think we have a really good group of women and the men are the same way I have to say. There mm -hmm. used to be some drama uh, <laughs> in the women's pole vault maybe 10 years back but we have a really good group of women right now. I oh, have, a, I have a question. I have a question oh, or, for you from ahead. our audience. Nick wants to know what is your personal best record in pole vaulting? Um, it's In meters it's 491. In feet I think it's 161. Okay, there you go, Nick. Sixteen point one. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I tried. I tried to pole vault one time, and um, let's just say the, the the pole didn't do very well. Um, Picture this now. <laughs> imagine, if you will, a paperclip bending <laughs> in an obscure way. No, I always gave a lot of. You know, it was kind of funny. A lot of our football players and and my friends were uh, track athletes. And some, um, you know, some were just fantastic and some were okay. But I was always amazed at the pole vaulters to be able to to do what they do. And, you know, it's kind of funny. So really the airlines give you a lot of a lot of hell, huh? They, they make you go through hell when taking your poles with you. Yeah, and every year it gets worse and worse. And honestly, I think now that, I mean, the only way we can fly between the U.S. and Europe, I think, is United. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so I mean they they're great and they they will take our poles, but um, it's getting harder and harder. And even within Europe, that used to be a lot easier. Uh, we're we're starting to have a lot of issues, which is funny because like the planes are huge, and I understand there's compartments underneath, but I mean they still have bulk luggage. space. So, yeah, yeah, they got <laughs> space for God's sake. Yeah. They got space. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, you know, because we, we're closing out the show, but Katarina, first of all, I, I want to tell you that uh, it's it, it's been great having you, and you. you can come on any time you want. And you know, if when you're in Cleveland, on the eastern on the eastern uh, side of things, and we're on the same time zone, you can come on any time and talk about anything you want. You are a wonderful guest. And I'm sure my fans loved it. And those all around the world that were watching are excited to see you. And I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we have over 10,000 people asking questions after. Katania, thanks so much. Folks, we're going to be right back after these messages. You're listening to A Pinch of Basil with my wonderful guest, Katania. This is America, America Matters, Matters Media on AM 1180 KCKQ. A Lotus Broadcast Station. The power of radio since 1967. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. 
That's 844-790-8255. Now back to the show. Oh, we are indeed back. It's a pinch of basil. I am your wonderful host, Basil. You can catch us anytime you want, but, you know, you can even call in. 844-790-8255. What is that text number, by the way, Janice? Did you want me to tell them? I'm yeah. kidding. Seven seven five two three seven twenty two sixty six, and please text us now. We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely, and, and the thing is, too, I got to be honest with you, Katania Stefanidis. What a wonderful guest, and I got to be honest with you, she's a sweetheart and uh, very, very down to earth for a person who's as famous as she is. Um, and she's just been um, absolutely fantastic, I, and I want to thank her again. Um, and listen, folks, if you're listening, and tell everybody what else, time it was where she where she is was, right now. It was one, you know, it right now it's one thirty in the morning, yes. Athens time. And yes, that's where and she's she at stayed right up now. for you. Can you believe yeah, that? For me, for she you, up for me. Actually, for your okay. audience, not for you. No, 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 <laughs> no. That's what it really was. She she was there for me. Ah, okay. Olympic I'll champion give you that. for me. She stayed up to one thirty. <laughs> the poor thing. And then uh, her husband says, yeah, he's getting sick of Greece. You know? <laughs> no, it's, it's, Who God says that, great. right? No. <laughs> Who says that? Oh, my gosh. You know, And the thing is, poor Mitchell is probably sitting there going, everyone's talking Greek. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> Everything's Greek to me here right That's now. That's right. <laughs> That's what I'd be saying. <laughs> I say it every so, time I talk to you. It's yeah, all Greek absolutely. to me. Yeah, especially yep. when you talk yep. to me. I feel like- <laughs> I feel like, hell, it's been a long day for me, and it's not even ending anytime soon. But uh, I, I got to be honest with you. It's, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been really good. But for those of you who are listening around the world, in Australia, all throughout Europe, South Africa, all throughout North America, not only can you catch me on Basil Fans through Facebook and in AmericaMatters.us, but you can also catch me on Greek Beat Radio. Greek Beats Radio. Greek Beats Radio. Greek Beats Radio. Beats Radio. Beats Radio. Oh, man. Beats Radio. We are getting so good at that. It is <laughs> It is actually frightening the way. You, you should you know, see Christian it. poised in the, in the room, poised in the booth, stuff. waiting, just waiting for that cue. I just don't know how much of a soft toss. You know, say, and we're doing this, and then we're going to yeah. go to Greek Beat Radio. Greek Beat Radio. Radio. She yeah, saw I, that one coming. I got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his finger on that. That's thing right. All the time. <laughs> well, everything's been going on, and a lot of you are probably have missed some things that uh, that have been happening around the world. So, what else? I thought I'd share with you some stories that have been going around that Let's are go. not COVID nineteen. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, thank God. I you know. know, I know. Did you know that that in Pueblo, Colorado, that they had a lottery? Did you know that? I didn't hear about this. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't know about that? I didn't. Tell me about it. Well, uh, (laughs) I guess with a little bit of luck and persistence, a Colorado man has hit the jackpot twice after playing the same numbers for 30 years. That's incredible. Listen, you go with your favorite numbers. I was I, I know people have been playing the same numbers and never have changed. My mother never. used to win um, at there used to be a meal that they would serve at the Atlantis here um, in in for breakfast and if she picked two numbers that were correct, she would get a breakfast, right? Fifteen bucks. So it was pretty good. My mom Not would bad. win like twice in one breakfast. That was crazy. Wow. I couldn't even win once. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, the, the, I, I couldn't I, listen. Um, I can't win anything. <laughs> I have tried and tried. I have never won a bloody thing, you know. And you only, you know, and the only thing is, it's so funny. I should be playing the lottery every day, right? Getting a card, whatever. And you know, but I only go when there's like four hundred and sixty million, because you know that measly <laughs> twenty five million. It's I'm not, not good enough. No. <laughs> I, that's chicken change. So, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> so tell us about Joe B, who was the well, Joe uh, winner. B. All right, in the morning and the and in the evening, communications director at, uh, Megan Doherty said the Colorado Lottery received approval earlier this month to process winning tickets worth ten thousand dollars or more at a touch-free drive-in 
claims office amid coronavirus epidemic. The winner must make an appointment to claim their prize or to do so through the California Wait a minute. Where so, I, where so this dude is going to no. You're too far. This I'm dude far? is going. Okay. You're too far. This dude is going to claim two one million dollar Powerball jackpots in a touch-free drive-through claims office. That's got to be a record, right? I mean, I mean, seriously? Yeah, that's he, crazy. I, that to, how the hell do you do that? I don't know. I guess they're going to find out, right? This was on March 25th. I heard nothing about this. Nothing yeah. at all. It's well, crazy. There is well, there's more the news out there. Stuff, I know, but there's more news out there and we just want to make sure everybody knows there's more stuff going on than what we all know about. So from your if you're anywhere <laughs> near Pueblo, Colorado, um play the lottery. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> apparently that's something you need to do, right? Absolutely. California tax dollars at work at, uh, is it Valio? Vallejo. 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 See, California. I can, I can say those words. I can't say the Greek ones, but I can say that one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you <laughs> live out there for God's sakes. A yeah. But you make fun of me all the time. I should have let you just stumble. <laughs> yeah. Valio. Yeah. Val, Valio. Vallejo. Valbanjo, <laughs> California <laughs> has resigned after throwing his, <laughs> and apparently drinking beer during a Zoom meeting between yes. city officials, and it was made public, according to the newspaper report, during the April 20th teleconference of the city's planning commission, Chris Peltzer Platzer. announced, what was that, Platzer? Platzer. I'm going to teach you to read. Platzer. Really? You're, you're <laughs> causing me to, to really? I've, I've asked you to read stuff. And I like, know. Hey. This is my chance. <laughs> i got to take it while it's there. Chris Platzer announced, I'd like to introduce my cat. Then he <laughs> picked up his cat, before, um, pet cat, before suddenly tossing the animal off the screen. <laughs> Can you believe this dude did that? Yeah, yeah. California tax dollars at work. That's what this is. Belzer was seen sipping a green, from a green bottle during the meeting. Uh, at the Times Herald reported after a, a conference ended, he could be heard making derogatory remarks. I'm going to call. I'm going to call bull. You know Blank. what? On your little <laughs> BS. According to the original commission re- meeting, video released by the Northern California City in an email, the, the Times Herald on Sunday. Platzer, just in case you're going to have me ask. <laughs> Blatzer said he had resigned from the planning commission. You Effective think? immediately. The reg- <laughs> resignation came days before the city council was set to consider a resolution removing him from the seven-person panel. This is what we- happens when we Zoom from home. Beer. <laughs> and you make it sound like a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? I think, listen. I like I beer. Friend. I love I am beer. a firm believer in drinking in public. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in tossing cats. Oh, I own, mm, you're going to oh, hear about yes. that. Right to oh, Basil at. <laughs> oh, meow. That's what I'm saying. Meow. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Cats can land on all four mm. legs. Not a problem. Well, sometimes. <laughs> That's crazy. Have you ever done anything crazy like Depends that? Depends on if the cat's drinking or not. Ah, that's true. Oh, that's true. Very good. Yeah. And there, well said. And there, that's why we have Christian folks. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom. From Words Christian, of that's wisdom, right. Christian so have you ever done anything crazy like that in public that you wish that you had not? I mean, you're a guy that's out in the public all the time. Have you ever done anything that you're like, oh, why did I do that? And I can't do that again. Anytime? Uh, you know, and I've never had a real public meltdown. I've never had That's a public good. meltdown um, that I can remember. Uh, but then again, I was probably drinking and blacked out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but let me tell you, folks, if cats could talk, <laughs> that's a different story. That's and, funny. That's you know, funny. I've never, done it. I've never done anything. Come back with a warrant. All right. Uh, a welcome, at at a Florida home seeks a warrant and deputies oblige. After following a, the Matt's helpful advice, Flagler County Sheriff deputies allegedly found, <clears throat> found <coughs> uh, Fantony, 
fentanyl. I'm sorry. Fentanyl. Fentanyl. <laughs> You're not a druggie spelled either. spelled <laughs> with a PH? Isn't fentanyl spelled I have no with idea. I just pulled the story. <laughs> okay. Fentanyl I just and think drug it's paraphernalia funny. inside the home. Okay. And they okay. Says, come back, and then he says, Matt okay. said, come back with a warrant. Yeah. The, well, you have to tell them what the Matt said. They can't see the Matt. The mat says, come back with a warrant. The mat was written, come back with a warrant. Yes, there's an actual mat. So somebody went out and had one made that said, come back with a warrant. And the police decided that they would do that. So they did. Well, you know, it's it's the law. Yeah. It's the law. Yeah, let's save that last one, only in North Carolina. Let's save that for the, you only got a minute left. So let's not race. Let's not race through that. Okay, you want, okay. We'll we'll, we'll stick to that one. We got a minute left, right? (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, Folks, listen, for all of you, uh, Fridays have been a blast. I thank you so much for coming in on Fridays for the Basil Fun Hour. Basil Fun Hour 5, that's right, number 5, the big V is coming back on, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But right now, I just want to let you all know that you are indeed listening to A Pinch of Basil with my wonderful co-host, Janice Hermson, and Christian Meyer, our engineer. A Pinch of Basil, you're listening to us right now. Check us out on Facebook, Basil Fans, B-A-S-I-L-E-F-A-N-S. And we're going to be right back after these wonderful words from our sponsors. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now back to the show. Oh, we are indeed back. You're listening to A Pinch of Basil. I am your wonderful host, Basil. Uh, Sexy. You know, it's it's difficult to be me. It really is. You know, when you're such a uh, stud muffin, I think that's probably the right Wow, we need to move on. (laughs) We need to move on. How about we? Listen, don't (laughs) hate me because I'm beautiful. All right? Okay. I promise. It's a curse. I know. It's a curse. I know. It's hard. (laughs) Hard to be you. Very. <laughs> Folks, I've been in, inside my home and, and my wife goes, you know what? We should maybe go to the beach house. Went to the beach house and it was nice. But then I realized something, Janice. What did you um, realize? I, I realized that my wife came with me. So it really <laughs> didn't change anything. <laughs> For shame. For shame. It's- I'm going to tell. She's not listening, but I'm going to tell. <laughs> oh, my God. She, she'll watch. I'll this, send her the me. segment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Some women love to get together. And well, just do you know, we've got to stick yeah. together, right? Oh, my God. I mean, what of you guys in the audience, you know, those who are listening right now, if you're driving right now, if you're listening to this in the U.K., oh, some of my U.K. fans, oh, oh, some of the hell they've been telling me that what they've been doing, spending time, they, you know, the one woman said something to me and she says, I'm having a relationship. And I said, what kind of relationship? And she goes, with my sex toys. That's the only thing she said. And I'm like, oh, my oh, God. Boy. Did I... <laughs> and I'm like, okay, thank you for sharing. You know, and I'm like, okay. But the guys and women and couples and those with children, oh, my God. I mean, my kids are old now. I mean, but I'm like, with the little Well, toddlers. my daughter has five kids. And... She was exposed, you know, indirectly to the COVID via a daycare thing, right? Oh, my God. So she works. So normally she's not home with the five children all day, right? She's at work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, she was quarantined for two weeks. When I talked to her today, she said, we're outside. (laughs) They're running around. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. That's what she's doing. That's where, uh, you know... um, What's that thing you give kids uh, medicine that they go to sleep? <laughs> vodka? No, vodka. No, no. no. Oh, wrong. Be- Sorry. Benadryl? <laughs> Benadryl. Yeah, maybe Benadryl. Or, yeah. in, or in, you know, Janice's case, vodka. You know, I'm just... <laughs> Only the best, though. Only the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. One's, one's Benadryl is another's vodka. <laughs> you know, what else can I say? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Hey, what can I tell you? <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Mommy it, said it, I'm sick again, so I'm just going to pass out here. Okay. It could have been wild turkey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty good, too. Oh, my God. Benadryl. Uh, Benadryl <laughs> actually puts kids right to sleep, doesn't it, Christian? Oh, yes. <laughs> 
it, Christian, it, put, it puts adults to sleep it as does. well. Yeah. It does. You're right. It sounds like someone's been freebasing the Benadryl. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, oh, what can you say? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think some of the stuff that's been going on right now, I, you know, I give you all a lot of credit. I really do. Yeah, if they have um, kids, that's If you guys tough. have kids and you guys are, I mean, and for my viewers on Facebook, hey, what are you guys doing to, to keep it fresh, to keep it alive? To, what do you, you know, it's crazy out there. And, and everyone's afraid. I went to the grocery store and I showed a picture of me wearing gloves, okay, thinking I was doing the right thing. I got so much BS from, from what? people. Oh, where's your mask? Oh. Where's your mask? Where's your mask? Where's your mask? You don't have a mask on. And you know, and you know what I said? I said, and and hide this beauty? I don't think so. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Such you an ego. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man. I mean, on a serious note, I mean, is is wearing the mask do you wear a mask everywhere you go now? I do not. I do not. Okay. Actually I went to the grocery I don't go to the grocery store real often. But when I do, I wear gloves. Um, I do too. But then, but then you have to decide when do you take them off, right? Do you take them off before you open the car door? After you open the car door, <laughs> right? Because then you still have to. Because then I still have soon, to grab those bags that I used my gloves with. So yeah, yep. it's a real challenge. I take I, as soon as I put <laughs> the bags in, in the back. I then get in the car and I just take them off and I throw them down on the floor. So then, when you get home, you're picking up the bags that you had the gloves on with. Yeah, well, right? you know, listen, I mean, well, I'm just you're saying right. you you're absolutely right. And I think it's it, it's getting to the point where it's look, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people's lives have been saved because of this. And by I the am way, too. Yeah. And, and on a serious note, I never say enough about this, but I do it at all. You know, anytime I do a live feed, maybe on the pinch of basil show, may it be um uh, on on the you know Friday things that we do you know basil fun hour, but thank you to all the health workers, the doctors, the nurses, for all the people, the emergency workers, for all the the federal employees from A to Z, the truck drivers, the grocery store clerks who are stocking, the people who are staying open, those who are feeding us at drive throughs and everything. Thank you so much for your service. Did they do, Christian, I don't know, maybe you know, they did a flyover today at noon to all the hospitals. Was that nationally done or was that just here? You know, I just heard about it during the yeah, last we, show. Yeah, I actually got pictures. I'm going to post them on Facebook. Um, so they did a flyover over all the hospitals, at least here in northern Nevada. I don't know, again, if that was something that was done nationally. But um, mm-hmm. do you know of anything that happened in your area, Basil? No, not that, I, not that I'm aware of. That was pretty here, cool. Uh, that was pretty cool. Our office, uh, my office is really close to the hospital. I think I would have heard the jets fly right. over. I didn't hear anything. Yeah, it was but pretty can cool. I, ask you, I I got to ask you a question before I forget. Uh, CNN did an interview with the mayor of Las Vegas. Yes. And it really didn't make her look all that. <laughs> well, she has her opinion. I didn't see the CNN interview myself. Did you, Christian? I no, I, I I've seen it. bits yeah. and pieces, clips, of, yeah. obviously, all of the news articles that have come out as a result. It was a very complimentary to her. Um, you know, and I don't know what side of the aisle she's on to be quite honest actually i think she's an independent pretty sure she's an independent yeah i'll I'll tell you what that that woman she's um she's been getting into the benadryl if you know what i mean (laughs) so well uh, tell now you have to explain that because i didn't see the interview so what what is it that you saw she she just was not the the true spokesperson (laughs) that should have been there uh and, and not that anderson is um is uh, Anderson Cooper? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really care for him, to be quite honest. Uh, with you. I want to interrupt but, you real quickly. Doug Brown said that he did see that on the news, not in Wilmington, but in New York. So there you go. The flyover. Yeah. So oh, there you okay. go. Sorry. All so right. now Thank tell you, me Doug. more. Tell me more about your uh, your your observation about our Las Vegas mayor. That's not our mayor here uh, in uh, Reno, by the way. 
No, I, I, I'm, that's fine. I'm sure. Uh, you know, Vegas, I think, can uh, do a hell of a lot better. But I'm just saying. <gasps> oh. Uh, yeah. She just. Okay. Yeah. You know, and she wants to lift everything. And when he asked her a serious question, she was like, well, I don't know. I don't, you know. Oh. It's, you know. Oh, I'm you know, going to have to watch happen. that now. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, you got to watch it. I will. I will. It, yeah. It's hysterical because huh. Anderson just, you know, was, you know, just railing on her. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'm not. You know which way my my vine swings. You know. When well, she's right down the middle, so you know that's okay. <laughs> she um, she's just not the she's not hmm. the brightest bulb in that fixture. Uh, the sharpest knife. Well, in that we'll drawer. make sure that she hears about this. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, listen. No one wants Vegas open. And 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 Atlantic City open, and all the casinos open, and all the clubs open more than I. The mother of God, you have to have a little bit of smarts when you do this. I mean, <laughs> come on, you got to have better answers. The health of people is the most important thing. Always has. Well, been, I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, and for those who think that they're going to take some type of I don't know, eat Drano and think that that's going to cure them <laughs> or or use Clorox as a mouthwash. Um, you're, you're, you're missing, your synapses are not clicking. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just not, it's just not getting to the brain. Don't do that. You're an idiot if you do that. And Don't hold uh, back, Basil. <laughs> say again? Don't hold back. <laughs> no, I, but, you know, listen, folks, if someone says jump off the bridge and you'll get rid of coronavirus, yeah, you will because you'll be dead. But that doesn't mean you should do it. Okay? There you go. So I'm for, with you. All, yeah. So listen, um, when the president or anyone speaks about the. He's, well, he's, Chris Cuomo's wife was the one. Chris Cuomo's wife was the one who said to use like Clorox in your bath or something. I mean, it was crazy. Clorox in your back. Yeah, it was crazy. To bleach yourself whiter than what you are. <laughs> I'm not sure it was her, but I'm pretty sure you? it was her that said that because she had the coronavirus. So you know, I don't know. Well, I, I'm not going to listen to anybody. I, I'm going to listen to me. <laughs> well, all right, you're taking your chances doing that too, Janice. But I'm telling you, <laughs> the thing is uh, better on, than folks, listening to some, somebody with Clorox. Some- yeah, use some bloody common sense for God's sakes. You know, but you know the best thing you can do is just be careful. Wash your hands 10, 20 times a day. You get in, you're done using the bathroom, wash your hands. Don't pick up your phone first. There is more fecal yeah. matter and stuff on your <laughs> telephone because you people you you wipe your butts and you pick up the phone. For God's sakes, you don't do that. If it, it's going to be a crappy call, but I'm telling you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Clean the, Listen, I can go on for days. But anyway, folks, don't forget, we listen every week on Tuesdays from 6 to 7. Uh, we can be heard all around the world on AmericaMatters.us. If you're using the TuneIn app, just search America Matters. And be sure to keep it on one of your favorites. Questions, comments, go to Basil Fans, B-A-S-I-L-E, F-A-N-S. I'm Basil on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. 